Gets and lads, welcome back to the M4 Podcast. My name is Elijah, and I'm joined by my friend Andres here, our resident West Ham fan of the channel. And we're here to talk about how shit West Ham are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because let's talk about it, guys. It's West Ham here, man. And and I'm sorry, Andres, but this is Andres' idea. That's why it I'm was my idea. Just the, the intro. His idea. Backstory. Backstory. Not all they use. Like, I'll make it up on the spot. <laughs> he says that. I did that. West Ham are 1 1 3 in the Prem. They just lost 5 1 to Liverpool last night. Scoreline doesn't after, tell the story. After a transfer window that brought a lot of good players in, a lot of a lot good of players in, a lot of money spent, a lot of potential there. Doesn't look like anything is shaping up. And of course, we have to talk about it on the channel for you guys. Before we get into it, make sure to leave a like if you agree that West Ham are shite. If you guys want more West Ham and or Premier League content, make sure to subscribe now. And uh, yeah, undress. Give us your rant, dog. I, I know you have dude. one. Oh, dude. I, I, it's so hard to begin, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know where to begin because there's so much wrong. That's that's the hard part. Look, uh, over <laughs> over 100 million pounds spent in this transfer window easily, you know. Uh, looks like we saw him sign the wrong striker. Should have signed <laughs> Duran from Aston Villa at this moment in time. Uh, but anyway, uh, let, let, let me have some structure into this. Look, we our issues last season. This is the main thing with West Ham Twitter. West Ham Twitter is a toxic place, by the way. Don't go there. I don't recommend it. Uh, but uh, the, the the major concern is our defense. We, we are literally statistically one of the worst defenses in the league. It looks very easy to get past us. Just ask Chelsea. They made it look very easy. Um, that was great. And, yeah, shut up. I, I, I'm so glad I woke up at 4.30 in the morning to watch that shit. Um, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and so that was the big reason why Moyes had to go was we felt like defensively it was no longer happening attacking wise it was no longer really happening for us but def- defensive was we were one of the worst defenses in the league last year as well and we lost a lot of games by a lot 4-0 5-0 those type of things um so we bring in Lopetegui Lopetegui preaches defense and he addresses the defense by signing certain key players like Kilman Wambasaka and uh Tobito, Tobito, right? Todibo. Todibo. Tobito. Tobi- oh, yeah. Him. Come on now. He was class yesterday. Not going to lie. Hey, he hasn't played a lot, so I haven't heard his now- name pronounced. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't hear it. Um, Ball knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it just looks like it's not working. What I don't, I don't know what they're doing at the training ground or what, but it's too easy to get past everybody. Like, genuinely, except Aaron Wambasak, it's a little bit harder. But I'm talking like when the team comes down the middle, it's way too easy for a one-two combination just to be able to go past our center backs in it. Because I, I don't know how many one-on-one goals we scored statistically, like they scored against us statistically, but let me tell you, it's a lot. It's a lot, especially against Chelsea. I think, what, two out of the three goals were one-on-ones? Something like that? The first yeah, two was. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, defensively, horrid, shocking. Needs to be fixed. Uh, maybe – uh, certain Frenchman should play instead of uh, Dino. No offense, Dino. You're just not cutting at the moment, especially <laughs> on that Chelsea goal. Oh my God, I was so livid when I saw that. But anyways, uh, and then and then midfield. Uh, we used to have a decent midfield. I thought last season. I thought our midfield was decent enough. It was pretty well balanced. Uh, got a lot of praise of Edson, Lucas Paqueta, uh, James Ward Prowse. Uh, I thought that was a really good midfield. Complemented each other, and a replacement of Declan Rice. And then this season, I don't know what the fuck happened, but they're non-existent. They're, they they are truly non-existent. Uh, you know, we signed Guido. Uh, he's too slow, I found out. And it's very frustrating very to slow. watch. He's very he slow. He's very slow. Um, and I wish he went to Barcelona. I'm not going to lie because I, I cannot watch him play anymore because of how slow he is to get to 50-50 balls. Like, honestly, like any 50-50 ball, a winger comes down, he might lose it. And it's very frustrating. Um, because of his slowness, and I, I just don't think he can play play in the Premier League with the pace it's at, or against the younger teams at least. Because I feel like he's it's like playing with ten men, kind of like with Charlie Rodriguez. But um, a midfield shit, def- the formation's bad in the sense of like the players are so high, the midfield is so disconnected from the back line that there's just a massive pocket sitting there. So all you gotta do is play through the midfield, and then you're basically through on four. It's a four on four. If you really want to play it that way. So that's frustrating to watch. Uh, Edson is having a shambolic season so far, unfortunately. <laughs> I hate to admit it. He's having a shambolic season. Rough start. It's a rough start. We're still early into the season. 
R- real quick, I want to plug that we just talked about Edson in our uh, ranking yeah, of the top yeah. seven players in Google Gaff. I if still you guys believe. Watched the video, make sure to watch the video, but yeah. I still believe in him. I'm just saying he's having a shambolic, shambolic start to the season. I blame the hamstring injury. But, um, you know, he's just trying to get his paces back. Uh, but attacking wise is our only positive at the moment, even though we hardly score nowadays. Uh, attacking wise, it actually doesn't look too bad when 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 they're on, when when they're actually playing fluid, uh, fluid football here. Uh, it looks like the Somerville Bowen Kudos front three is actually not too bad because I don't know our there was a thirty five million pound dollar signing striker has yet to start. I don't think I don't think he started one game yet, or yeah, for once. who? Okay. Oh yeah, twenty seven million euros. But yeah, 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 shite. He, <laughs> well, so far, I, I'm gonna, and he's injured. Like, come on, bro. Like, she was just signed Duran, bro. It's so frustrating too, especially when he scores against you. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it's it's to the benefit of the doubt that I'm gonna give Lapetegi, even though he injured his calf yesterday during the game. <laughs> I kid you not. That's how it really that's sums how, up. Really sums up West Ham season so far. You know. Uh, yeah, our manager injured himself because he was so mad at the team. He was jumping up and down. Um, but I'm gonna give him benefit of doubt. A lot of the new signings haven't played in the Premier League before, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hope that it's just you know we're going through it. We're trying to get the flow because there's moments in games where we're playing very well in terms of we're breaking the lines, especially against Liverpool before they scored that third one. It looked like we were gonna equalize. We were playing through, playing very well, creating good, creating, creating good chances. And but the, that's the thing; it's the only issue. There's moments in games where we look like we're, there's something there, except against Chelsea. Fuck off! Um, but uh, that was the only that. time where I generally thought we were not going to win that game, except for that penalty. But we won't talk about that because it wouldn't have really mattered. <laughs> but uh, whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, it's not clicking. It looks like they don't have an identity just yet. Unfortunately for us, defensively midfield attack, literally all three fronts of the game look like they don't have an identity, uh, in terms of, they don't know what to do. Uh, looks like they're just kind of going out there and hoping for the best. And then there's moments where it looks like, oh shit, they've actually gone to training and put stuff together. And they're and like, I see the, I see it. I can see the vision. And then there's moments where I'm like, I don't see what's going. Like, like I don't know how they go from I see the vision to it looks like shit and it looks like there's 11 players out there. Um, but also goalkeeping hasn't been the greatest, I will admit. A lot of a lot of, uh, not the greatest from Fabianski, from what I've seen from Fabianski him. Fabianski should have been out a year or two ago. I've been, I've yeah. been saying this. I've been thinking this. Fabianski should have been I think out Liverpool ago, highlighted it. Uh, I mean, he made a great save onto the post yesterday. But I mean, you know, like I expect you to save that from that far out. You know what I mean? Like unless yeah. it's like a top bench. That's true. I mean, but, Ariola has then, the quality to be a, a first team keeper for a Premier League team. I don't know how why he hasn't left yet. Oh, it's because he's class, mate. No, it's the money. Well, it's no, it's, he's class, but like he, but like you know, I if I was Ariola and I'm sitting behind Fabianski and it's going on what two or three, four years now, like I'd be. Out yeah, of I party. mean, he's starting. He's just just because it's like a cup game, you know, no yeah, reason yeah. to play. But yeah. I, I was just like against Chelsea, I wasn't too convinced by him. I, and I wasn't too happy with his performance because like, he did a lot of standing still for all three goals. I get granted he had his moments, but literally all three goals he literally did not move, which is very infuriating to watch. But you know, whatever, just me. Uh, but yeah, I it's just it's just no identity is the best way to describe describe this West Ham team at the moment. And uh, Brentford is a must win game. Uh, Fabrizio has said that the the, uh, the upper management of West Ham are very concerned with the results I'd be surprised. and not surprised <laughs> and do want something to change but they understand that it's going to take some time especially with all this change that has happened inside the club uh, with manager and all these new players but yeah it's it's shambolic and it's very hard to watch unfortunately at the moment cuz i don't i i don't know if we'll win i don't know if we'll win saturday but if we play anything how we did against liverpool in that second half i in the first 20 minutes i think there's a chance but kind of depends yeah, I mean, I will say, but... like, West Ham have... You started the season decently. Like, okay, okay, you lose to Aston Villa first week. But it was, it was 2-1. And then you beat Crystal Palace and Bournemouth afterwards. Not bad. And I, I do want to cut West Ham a little bit slacker because they did go on to play City, Fulham, Chelsea, Liverpool. And, you know, you're not going to pull a lot of points from that in general. I think just the humiliating aspect of it <laughs> is what's pretty brutal here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think the hardest one to take 
was literally the Chelsea one just because it looked like we were genuinely never in that game. Jared Bowen himself, our yeah. captain, said, said it himself. We were never in that game. Uh, and I think that was the hardest hardest one to take, especially it's London rivals. You want to show up, and then you absolutely lay an egg, and they score in the first three minutes or two minutes. <laughs> uh, and then you're like, well, fuck. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's the hardest one to take. I think Liverpool is kind of scorelines misleading on how the game actually hmm. went. Uh I think I think I that game showed why VAR needs to exist because I think refs rely a lot on it and I mm-hmm. think a lot of the calls were just let go because it was too close to call. Um, so personally, that's my humble opinion, just because we got dicked over. But City, <laughs> City was City was promising. There's moments, but fucking Holland's a cheat code, as I've said before. There's a TikTok about that. But I don't know. It's just even in the games we have won, it's not really convincing enough for me. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like, it's like, yeah, we won, but like, mm, I mean, there's, there's more individual quality than actual like team play. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. As, especially uh, against Palace, like, especially against Palace, it was t- individual quality more than uh, team play just because all the goals came on when our subs came on and then they changed the game for us. And then that Aaron Wambasaka kind of sealed it for us with the play he did with Bowen. Um, to, to score the second, so I, I, I think it's a, we're relying a lot on individual play because I think team play wise we haven't really figured that part out yet. Unfortunately, I think that's where our biggest asset issue is, and especially going to Saturday, no Edson Alvarez because he decided to tackle Mosala, which fair enough, I would too. Um, but he decided to tackle him and uh, on a already on a yellow, and so he got sent off. Uh, so no Edson, so it's going to be an interesting midfield to see who's going to be playing that holder sitter role in front of the front two, uh, back two. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it, it's worrying. I'm not going to lie, but I, I have hope. You know what I mean? It, it, we're at the bottom at the moment. We're at the bottom of the barrel, but, but, but there's only one way up from here. There's only one well, way. Not really. You can also go get relegated, but I, I doubt that's going to happen <laughs> with the way certain gonna teams are playing. I don't no, it's going to happen. I mean, like, okay. I think if there's a game to watch this weekend in the Premier League, it's this game. Um, hey, we're on USA, bro. We're on USA. Hey, wow! Look at that. Yeah, exactly. See? And and they we're get big the time too. like that. It's it's a big game for both teams. I, but yeah, truthfully, I, I give Brett for the edge it's out of both teams here. I mean, like, and I, I try to give I try to give you credit, but you didn't accept it earlier. I try to give West Ham credit. West Ham, it's going to be a good game, but I think Brentford are just just have that little bit more. They are on average score almost like they score. I think one point four goals a game. I think is what it is. Yeah, one point four. West Ham. Only average one goal a game. Um, they both average the same amount conceded per match. So I don't know. I think it's going to be a decently scoring game. Uh, but I'm going to. I, I, I'll go Brentford here. It, it, it's so hard to look at West Ham and look at their transfer history and who they brought in. Like just this one page alone that I'm looking at right now of all the transfers they got brought in in this summer. And it's so good. Carlos Soler, Juan yeah. Bissaka, Todibo, Guido Rodriguez, uh, Fulcrug, uh, Somerville. Class, Where the hell is he? Been? Where the hell is he been? No, no, no. He's been very I, I'm, good. I'm messing. I'm messing. Max Kilman and Luis Guillerme. He's really been good, non-existent. Really good <laughs> players overall, and it, nothing's clicking overall for for West Ham. And that's, I'm not saying it's down to the manager, but manager has a play has a little part in that. No, I mean, yeah. I I had really high hopes for for Lepetegui when he moved to West Ham. I think he's a class manager in La Liga. I don't think. Uh, the Premier League is his kind of league, unfortunately. Like, I, I really do, at this rate, I see Lopetegui out by next year or the year after, and he goes back to La Liga for, for some team. Yeah, over there. I, I don't think he, get, he can't get the sack this year. Like, not, no, not, not just yet. No way. No, not, not, not Unless just he yet, goes to it, shit, like we're in a relegation battle. Yeah, then I, if, I if West Ham it. isn't fighting for anything, or not fighting for anything, if West Ham is, is exactly where they are right now in a year, I think you sack him. Because West Ham should not be sitting 14th with the team they have. No, Something's we wrong. We should be pushing obviously. top seven. Easy. No, exactly. I mean, we talked about this earlier. West Ham should be in the conversation of 8, 9, 10 at the very worst, right, with these yeah. kind of players on this team. But to sit in 14th, granted, yeah, it's five games in. Anything can change, and you did play three tough opponents, right? Four tough opponents, actually. So it's not it's mm, not the worst three. thing in the world. Uh, well, I mean, Villa, Liverpool, City with Chelsea. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it yeah. could it could be a lot worse, but you know it's it it could get better, but it, yes, it could it could yeah. stay this way, and that's and that that'd be a big shock. Like that'd be uh, my a big hope, deal. 
my hope is is like they'll pull up a demographic like going like a couple of months down down in the season and just be like, oh, West Ham horrible start, but look at this run they're on. They're doing great. That's that's my hope right now. That's my hope is that one day it's just gonna click. The only hope. Like all the players are saying, something's got to change. Well, it's down to you a lot because you guys are the ones I, I, playing. So I mean, it's like okay, the, the the thing with United, right? With 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 Manchester United, right? Ten Hag, shite manager, in my opinion. But the players aren't playing for them. Aren't playing for him either. It's the same thing for West Ham. Like I don't think the, the players aren't helping him either. You know, like yeah. I, I do think a lot of it is down to Lopetegui, but at the same time, the players aren't really helping him a whole lot. You know, I agree. that's why they're I losing three zero. Defensively, like, we're not helping them out. <laughs> yeah, like with the with the Chelsea game on Chelsea Twitter, the the overall feeling of the Chelsea fans was shit because like West Ham typically has Chelsea's number. It, it there's a West Ham curse against Chelsea. Truthfully, to be honest, truthfully. there's moments in the game where I was like, "Oh shit, we might, if we score here, there might be game back on." You know what I mean? It'd be, it'd be I a was... complete switch. It, granted, it's different because Chelsea are, I think, a way different team compared to last season. But like the feeling overall was like really like, "Oh boy, here we go again." Because this happens every year where there's something with West Ham. But hey, just it wait really for that shows, reverse fixture, baby. It really shows what's wrong with West Ham right now for the fact that they were hardly even in that game at all. Like, yeah, I mean, that was a tough one. I, the I was fans high, high hopes. Yeah, like the fans know what they're going into with the game, uh, but and which means the players did too. And well, like I said, West Ham always find a way to beat us. They always find a way to beat Chelsea. But for them to not even have had a shout in that game, really a big sign. Really a big sign as to where they are at right now. Hopefully, Brentford Saturday clock seven a.m. PST uh, will will be the turning point to our season. Especially these next two games, massive games in terms of points. We need to pick up Brentford and Ipswich Town going into a London Derby the following week after Ipswich. So, I mean, these two seasons honestly could decide our fate. I'm not going to lie for the rest of the season in terms of where we're going. Wow, these two games? That's crazy. These, those, yeah, I, I mean, know, just to pick up some momentum going into a London Derby and then it's Man United next. I mean, like, you know, we got we to gotta have some confidence going into these games, you know? I mean, uh, the thing with momentum, too, is different because you play Brentford and Ipswich and then there's an international break. is two weeks off again. So, yeah. You, like, I hate I, bro, I hate it so much. Let's we'll start, go bad. I know. We'll start cooking and then we'll go to shit when we come back. So that's how we like, are. Let's say those two go well and then you, you or bad. If it goes bad, then you have another break and you don't have to endure suffering. But if it goes well and you have to wait again, then went to Machine. And my on, suffering, and dog, I gotta watch Mexico play the United States without <laughs> Santi. Bro, what are you talking about? And my suffering. It's just gonna continue, dog. <laughs> me. I'm gonna right. just I'm shut sorry. down and watch the NFL, dog. <laughs> quiet. At least my Turns team's off. good this year. I'm gonna just shut down. You won't see him on this channel for the international break. There you go. There you go. <laughs> he needs it. That's only if it goes to shit. Only if it goes to shit. True. Very true. Very true. No pressure. Uh, no pressure. Well, are those got anything else to add on dress? No, that was that was that was very very therapeutic, man. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I had a lot pent up. In, in, in my, in I can my. almost promise the viewers that this right. will not be the last time we hear about this from Andres in some capacity uh, by the end of the season. So, well, no, unless things change around, then you'll hear it all the time and me just boasting about it. But you know, true, that's how it, that's how I am. God, but yeah, God that was re- that was God really relieving, us. you know, because I see all this stuff on Twitter, <laughs> but I know no one cares about my opinion on Twitter. You know what I mean? But like, I know probably no one cares about my opinion on here. But you never know, you know, it's it's, it's out there. So, thank you. I, 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 uh, Get a podcast and just talk that. about random things. I needed that. He needed yeah. that, yeah. Especially after yesterday. Uh, <laughs> I don't even get mad anymore, dude. I just kind of like, I kind of just like no reaction, especially against Chelsea. It was just like a no reaction thing until like the 90th minute. Then it kind of hit me the anger. <laughs> and then I was like, Valid. Oh. Valid. Yeah. Then I was yelling at our own players. I wasn't even yelling at Chelsea. I was just yelling at our own players. They, they can't hear me. It's on TV, but you know, I don't care. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that's all I got to say. Um, you know, leave your thoughts, opinions of why West Ham are shit. If you think they're going to continue to be shit, as Elijah said. Um, but yeah, just let us know. Or let it, let us know if there's hope. You know, let me let me know. Let me know. Um, or you just think I'm stupid, one of the two for being a West Ham fan. But that's just me. But uh, that's all I got. Um, I think I'm sure, pretty much sure Elijah, that's all he's got because his club's actually kind of chilling at the moment. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one.